Now we've written these two functions. They seem awfully similar. Wouldn't it be nice to only have to write one of them instead of having to do both of them? To have one thing that could do both add threes and add fives. In this video, we're going to see how to turn these two functions into one function that can do either job. Our approach is going to be based on finding similarities and differences between these two functions, which you can see here side by side. The first thing we're going to do is make these two functions as similar as possible. To do that, let's first look at the cond clauses. We have two questions in each one, so that's good. But the second question, and the first one is else, and then the second one is consa of L. Let's change them so that they're the same. That won't change what we're doing. These are two interchangeable approaches. We'll use else in both cases. Now let's look at the answer parts. In the first, we're producing empty. In the second, we're producing L. But L is empty, so these are the same. Let's change them again to be the same. We'll use empty in each case. Another difference is the order in which we add things together. In the first function, we're adding 5 to the first, and in the second, we're adding the first to 3. We'll switch the order so that they're the same. Now we've made our functions as similar as we can. The next thing we're going to do is look at the differences. We're going to mark each difference in the two functions. Here, there's only one difference the number 5 versus the number 3. Now that we've identified the differences, we're going to take the next step, which is to turn those differences into inputs to the functions. Since there's only one difference, we're going to add exactly one input to our function. Now, as we can see, our two functions are exactly the same. We've added an input and replaced the thing that was different with that input. This new function is an abstraction of the two original functions. There are still a few things missing here. First, we now have the wrong signature, purpose, and name of this function. So let's fix those. We know that our new input is a number because we started with 5 and 3, and those are numbers. Another problem is that our recursive call, add 5 to all, has the wrong name. When we change our name, we have to make sure to change that. It also has the wrong number of inputs. We need to pass n along as our second input into add n to all. Now we've finished defining add n to all, and we have our abstraction. The next step, once you've built an abstraction, is to use it. We're going to use it to redefine the two functions that we started with. Let's remember add n to all and bring back those two functions. Here are the two functions that we started with. Let's use add n to all to redefine both of them. The way to do that is to go back to the things that we circled in each case. For add 5 to all, we circled a 5. That means that our new function body is going to use add n to all with the original input to add 5 to all, l, and 5 because that's what we circled when we created our abstraction. For add threes, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to end up with three instead of five. Now we're going to run our program, and we'll see that all of the original tests for add threes and add five to all will still pass. Now we've finished defining our abstraction and seeing that it works in all the cases that we abstracted from. Redefining the functions that we started with and running their tests and seeing that they work is how we test the abstractions that we create.